The one thing that we know about this is that authenticity is really important. And what we mean by that around uh, sex in particular is that we have the power, personal power, and the safety and the feeling of willingness, like it's going to actually be worthwhile to take the risk to be vulnerable and say how we feel. And it's not a one and done. We have to keep working towards. So when we're talking about anything where we feel vulnerable, it's a risk to share how we feel. And as we take that risk, sometimes it doesn't work out, but often it does, especially in a group like this, where we can acknowledge this is how I actually feel. And when we're in a sexual relationship with somebody else, do we feel safe enough to lower our shields? I don't know if anybody else is a Star Trek fan. But to tell the truth about sex and what happens when we keep our shields up is that we don't really have much of a connection. And there's all kinds of reasons why we do that. So to not shame ourselves around that either. So this is partly still on Emily Nagoski, and I have another resource for you at the end as, as well. So she talks about sex that advances the plot, which is anything, any kind of sex that's more than just physical pleasure. So that it's an attachment behavior. It reinforces the social bonds between adults. It helps us feel safe and cherished in this chaotic world that we live in. And it's something that often we will feel safer and more emotionally connected with someone after, after we've had sex. It depends on the kind of sex. It depends on uh, what happened, if it was really consensual. But often when sex works, then we're able to, to feel more connected with somebody. So self-inhibiting, and, and part of this is, has to do with putting on the brakes, like we've been talking about the last few weeks. But we self-inhibit or we don't fully express ourselves sexually in part because we want to be accepted socially. Women tend to do that more than men, and men tend to have more freedom to have a range of sexual expression than women do. Women are usually put into this kind of good girl, bad girl dichotomy. And if we express something that is seen as too sexually aroused or too sexually interested, then we're often put into that bad girl category so that we have all the penalties that come with that. So ideally, when we're talking about sex with partners, which is kind of the main part of this, we also have a communication with ourselves about sex. Ideally, and you know, I come back to this quote by Dr. Stephen Porges, feeling safe enough to relax in another's arms. And so when we're talking about sex, we need to have that feeling of trust and connection and acknowledge that we have sex for a lot of different reasons. And so if, when we're first getting together with someone, it might be more about sexual desire. But it also could be an attempt or a bid for intimacy and connection. Uh, she talks about solace sex is the desire to prove we're loved. And it's not really erotic. It's about easing fear. And romance novels, and I would include movies, a lot of what we take in, books, movies, other things, are all about feeling lost and now I'm home and I'm home in a partnership. It doesn't really translate into feeling home on my own. It's, it's really home in the partnership. And the other thing that we could acknowledge when we're having communication about sex, and sometimes we might communicate this and sometimes we would be careful about that, is we have a range of feelings about our partner's sexual arousal and desire. So it's not only our own, we also have a range of feelings about theirs as well. So it's complicated. So let's go into the inquiry now. So this is communicating, talking about sex. I'll just kind of go through these. So if you want to just close your eyes, you could. If you want to write things down in journal, or if you want to just do this in your mind's eye. But as you're doing it, this is always a somatic mindfulness inquiry. What's happening in your body as you're listening to those words or taking those in. And it might be that you want to work primarily on one of those lines. And it might be that you want to kind of go through sequentially one after the other. However you want to do it is good. So I'm going to start with the bottom part. So if your primary sexual expression is with yourself, if you don't have sexual partners, then you might want to look at this feeling of being at home in my body. 
and my body is mine. How true does that feel? So when we're in sexual partnerships or relationships with others, we often have that complex negotiating that happens. Sometimes we have sex when we don't feel like it. We have sex for all those reasons that we just talked about. What's your feeling? And this could be whether you're in a relationship or not in one. You could be working with these. What is your response to that sentence? I am at home in my body. My body is mine. And notice your response, I am interested in exploring sexual pleasure with myself, maybe with other people if you have partnerships around that. I am interested in exploring sexual pleasure. In those common to everyone who's experiencing mostly sexual expression with themselves or if you are experiencing that with other people as well. Notice your response in your body. Do you tighten up? Do you relax? Do you take a deep breath? Do you get a no anywhere in your body? If you do, then that's something we could look into. I know myself well sexually. How true does that feel for you? It could be anywhere from, I don't ever think about that, although you probably wouldn't be doing this inquiry if you were on that end of the continuum. It's really true. I really know myself well sexually. I've explored a lot. I'm really familiar with that. I know myself well sexually. I'm comfortable expressing myself sexually. So that could be talking or expressing through your body. What is your response to that? I'm comfortable expressing myself sexually. I'm interested in talking about sex with partners. Is this a conversation that you can have, that you're interested in having? I think it's fair to say that in our culture, that's not common. Feeling comfortable talking about sex, especially with partners. Where is that for you? I know what I want and I can ask for more, for less, or to stop, even if it's awkward and it's in the middle of something. I can ask for more, for less, or to stop. What's your response to that in your body, in thoughts, feelings? Deep breaths, stay connected in your body. This might be really easy for you, or it might be a little bit triggering. Keep noticing what's going on. And this question 
is really in the context of a relationship. I can resist the pressure to have sex when I don't want to. People who are in partnerships where sex is happening, how do you feel about that? Or is it something that you kind of go along with? Keep the peace or just keep a connection? How do you feel about that? Notice your breath. Notice if anything tightened up in your body or if anything relaxed. And letting yourself focus for a couple of minutes on whatever is drawing your attention. Let yourself stay regulated, be present in your body, notice your breath. What's coming up for you as we're looking into expressing ourselves sexually, communicating, talking? How do we feel about that? And then I have one more resource I wanted to share. Her name is Rafaela. And she has a couple of really great, well, she's got a lot of good resources on her website. But one is, do you have any tips for ways to turn someone down for sex, even when it's your significant other, without hurting their feelings coming off as rude, selfish, or inconsiderate? So she's got a couple of blogs about that. If you go to her website, which is listed here, you can find all kinds of good resources on there. In addition to that, of course, we have Emily Nagoski's work, Come As You Are, that we've been working with as well. 